All right, it is 7.30, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to the live walkthrough for Nevada's big game tag application process. Tonight, our host is Marty Olson. Marty is the hunter education educator down in the Southern region. And as moderators, you have me tonight, which I'm the hunter and archery education coordinator in the Western region. And then we have Nicole, who is a wildlife educator. And I just first off want to start. Thank you for joining us tonight for our conservation education program. Family friendly program rated PG. Profanity and inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated in the chat or the Q&A. All questions are put in the chat box or the Q&A box should be on topic. I also want to point out that to try to be patient tonight because all questions will be answered. Just kind of hang tight and wait to see if your question is going to be answered. Failing to follow these guidelines will result in being muted in the chat or Q&A or being removed from the live stream. So what we're looking at today, before we hand the reins over to Marty, we're going to be looking at how bonus points work individually and as a party hunt. We're going to be looking at draw order, navigation of application. We're going to do a full walkthrough with you guys. Profile, credit card, and email. Hunter education and how to submit your certification for it. That's for residents and non-residents. Auto renewal of license, including purchasing and printing a license. Party applications for residents and non-residents linking and unlinking accounts, applying as an individual or as a party hunt, alternative options and FCFS, and we'll get into details about those things, and then your return cards and surveys. And this webinar is strictly for demonstration purposes only and is performed in a test system. So all the selections are just examples. So from this point on, you're gonna hear Marty's voice any questions, put them in the chat box, Q&A. Nicole and I will answer questions. Marty, it's all yours. Thanks, Dawn, and uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, thanks to uh, Dawn and Nicole for sitting in and moderating this. So uh, one of the uh, questions I get mostly uh, every year is, what are my best chances of getting a big game tag? And that's kind of what we're going to show you. There's no secrets here but there's a lot of things you can do to help increase your chance of getting one of those tags. So the first thing we wanna start off with before we get into our application is how the bonus system works. And this is an example here of, of John Doe's big game applications. And you can see there are several categories he's got here and he has bonus points in all of them except like the California Bighorn Sheep. And Bonus points really increase your odds, uh, but in no way do they guarantee uh, an opportunity uh, to draw one of those tags. So keep that in mind, but you'll get to see the big difference between one bonus point and four bonus points. And that's what we're gonna look at right here is just his first two applications, the antler deer and the antelope horns longer than, ear, longer than the ears. Uh, a, a real thing to keep in mind that once you draw some of these coveted tags, you do go into a waiting period, uh, not on depredation or antlerless uh, as it shows here, but bighorn sheep is 10 years, uh, ewe is two years, uh, antlered elk is seven years. So that's one reason it's important to build your bonus points up. Even if you're not planning on going hunting on one of these big game animals this year, but it's a $10 bonus point plus a dollar convenience fee, and it greatly increases your odds of drawing one of these tags. So here's an example of his antler deer tag. Uh, he had one bonus point. So we square those points. One times one is one, and you add one for the application. So you have a total of two. And then the computer will randomly select two numbers between one and 100 million for this application. And here on his antelope tag, he had four bonus points, 
Four times four is 16, plus one for this application, a total of 17. So the computer randomly selects him 17 numbers uh, out of one and 100 million. So here's his first two numbers for his deer. And you can see the first number was lower. So this number becomes the number for his draw application. Even though you get more numbers with the bonus points, each application is only assigned one number. And since his lower number is going to be assigned to him, if you can't win with the low number, you're certainly not gonna win with the higher number. <clears throat> now you look here on his antelope horns longer than uh, ears, uh, the computer randomly selected him 17 numbers. And you can see on these numbers, uh, number 16 was the lowest number. So this low number is gonna become the draw number for his antelope application. And this system will work on and on through each one of the categories. <clears throat> now let's talk a minute about bonus points uh, for party applications. A party application acts as one application. The only difference is you're asking for more tags on that one application than an individual. So here's a case where we had uh, Charlie, Bill, and John who join in together for a party application uh, for the horn shorter than ears. Now on this one, uh, Bill, as you can see, had six bonus points. So if he applied individually, he would end up with 37 numbers randomly selected for him. And Charlie and John would end up with five. Now, the differences on the party application is these numbers get averaged and then uh, divided by the number of applicants and rounded to the nearest whole number. So this application is going to get a total of 10 numbers, which it works the same way as an individual. Uh, here's the 10 numbers that the computer randomly selected out of one in 100 million. And as you can see, the third number they drew is their low number. So that's the number that's going to be assigned to their application. Now, a couple things to point out here is when you're doing a party application uh, and you have a lot of people in your party, if you have five people on your party application, you wanna look at last year's quota and determine you know, if you're asking for all of those tags in that unit. Uh, once again, people ask me, what are my best chances? You can certainly select this unit as one of your choices because you do get five choices, but I would be cautious on looking at some of the other units that have more tags in it uh, if you pick this one as your first unit. Uh, if you have non-residents joining uh, in your hunt with you, you wanna do the same thing. Uh, if you've got two non-residents coming in from out of state and you're looking to put in for this unit, you're asking for all the tags in that unit. So keep that in mind whenever you're applying and look at last year's quota. The, uh, the other thing that's new this year on the left-hand side of the screen is this first come first serve. And uh, this, after the second draw, if there's any tags left over and none of the tags uh, had an alternate choice checked for them, they will come into a first come first serve, which you'll come to this website, endowlicensing.com, and you'll purchase your, your, license or your tag right there on that website. Uh, they'll be no longer going into the office and uh, trying to get another tag. It's gonna be a timed system. So as soon as those come available, uh, if you didn't draw a tag, you can go right in there and purchase them. It's new this year, it's called the first come first serve. Uh, another thing to look at on the right-hand side there is anything colored in blue is something new this year. Uh, so if you look at these three down here in the, in the lower side, uh, you'll see these dates are in blue. And you'll see last year there was 375 tags issued for that unit. Uh, what's changed with this is the date of the hunt. So that's why it's in blue. If you look at the one in the middle, uh, you'll see question marks here. So there's no quota there. That's simply because that hunt didn't exist last year. So there, what, we had no uh, data for those, those quotes. Uh, so if you see the blue highlights in there, that means that's something new.
So what's important also this year is the order of the draw. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, the reason why there's an order to these draws is because you're only allowed uh, one, one tag per species per year. Now there's a couple exceptions to that and those are heritage tags, uh, landowner compensation tags uh, and uh, antlerless tags and incentive tags. Uh, so you can get one deer, one elk, one antelope, one mountain goat, one bear, one Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, one California, and one desert sheep. So starting off at the top here, the very first draw is going to be the silver state. Now, sometimes called the governor's tag, the silver state, uh, there's no bonus points accumulated. So everybody's in that system one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you, uh, you get to keep your bonus points if you draw this tag. Uh, if you have bonus points in deer and you apply for the Silver State deer tag and you get this, you get to keep those bonus points. You can hunt any weapon from August uh, to December and sheep from July to the end of December. There are some unit restrictions in there and that's from last year's harvest in areas where there was less than 10 uh, Nelson sheep and less than seven California sheep. The PIW is the very next uh, draw, uh, and that stands for Partnership in Wildlife. Uh, there's no bonus points accumulated for this. You can hunt any unit uh, uh, with weapons and season specific, meaning during the archery season, you have to hunt archery, muzzleloader, you have to hunt muzzleloader. Uh, bonus points do revert to zero if you're successful on this draw. Now, because you can only accumulate a one deer or one elk uh, per year, uh, once you draw one of these, if you are signed up for any of these other draws underneath here, you will receive a bonus point in them. You're already pulled out of the equation, uh, with the exception uh, for depredation, management tag, Silver State, or PIW. There's no bonus points for them, uh, but you can only get one per year. So the next we go to is the junior mule deer antlered and antlerless uh, tags. And there's restrictions on this too. Uh, you must be 12 before the start of the season and not acquire your 18th birthday by the end of the season. Then we move into basically all the male species, Rocky Mountain bighorn, California desert bighorn, elk antlered, elk depredation antlered, antelope horns longer than ears, mule deer antlered, and then we move down to California bighorn U, desert U, elk antlerless, elk depredation antlerless, antelope horns shorter than ears, and mule deer antlerless. Then we move to the next category, elk spike. Then we move to mountain goat, either sex, bear, either sex. And each time one of those categories comes up and you have an application in there, the computer will randomly select the amount of numbers that you're eligible for, depending on your bonus points. That's why it's very important to build your bonus points up. And in, in the situation here with these, uh, some people may say, well, I, I'm not really a trophy hunter. I don't wanna apply for the antlered elk. Buy a bonus point for that antlered elk. You can still apply for the elk antlerless hunt. And because you just purchased a bonus point, you're not even gonna be in that draw. So you're still eligible for the antlerless elk. And one reason why we went to, to this system was because uh, in the past it was random. We didn't know which one of these was first. So if the elk antlerless came up, it would knock you out of the elk antler. This way, an individual uh, can apply for all of these. And in this case, there's actually seven opportunities to apply for elk. And that's going to be the Silver State, the PIW, the Elk Antlered, the Elk Depredation, uh, the Elk Antlerless, the Elk Depredation Antlerless, and the Elk Spike. So you've got seven different applications you can apply there if you really want to hunt elk. And I encourage you to apply for all of them. And I, I understand, you know, people are working and uh, there's only so many vacation weeks you have. Uh, so much time you can spend in the in the outdoors. So buy a bonus point on some of those and get yourself in the system. Because once you do get an elk antler tag, 
and you go into a waiting period, you already wanna have some bonus points built up in the other categories. So you're going to be able to uh, be successful in drawing some of those tags. So with that being said, there's one last thing and that's the Nevada Dream Tag. This is a raffle more or less run by the uh, nevadadreamtag.org. So you go here and you purchase a resource stamp uh, for $10 and then you can buy as many raffle tickets as you wish. You can buy one or you can buy a hundred or you can even buy more. Uh, that resource stamp uh, uh, comes back to the department and goes into the Heritage Trust account. So that's another opportunity you can get there and you can buy as many uh, raffle tickets as you wish. So with that being said, we're going to say, how do we get to the application period? So basically you're going to go to your web browser to endowlicensing.com. And this page is what's going to come up right here. And I'm going to switch over to a real quick, maybe. And it did stop sharing there, did it not? Yeah, we can't see your screen right now. Okay. And it just takes a quick second. Hey, Marty, while you're doing that, do you want to answer a question? Sure. Can a kid apply for both the junior hunt and an adult hunt? If the kid is unsuccessful on the junior hunt, then it would be nice if the kid also has an application for an adult hunt. Is that possible to put a kid in the junior hunt and the adult hunt? No, he, no, he can only apply for one. So if he applies for the junior hunt first and is unsuccessful and there's leftover tag in the adult hunt, he can apply for that. But he only gets one opportunity for the deer because on the junior hunt, it is buck or doe. So he's got to choose one or the other. Now he can go into a group hunt with an adult, uh, but then he is has the same uh, odds and probability as an adult. The, the youth hunt is the ticket to go and really encourage folks to mentor and, and take a, a youngster outdoors and get them into the hunting uh, scene. Um, so that's their best choice. And that's why we have the, the youth hunt. Okay, so this screen should be up now. Uh, this is a test screen. Uh, once again, so any selections I make and stuff in here uh, is, is solely on the test side. The first thing you're going to want to do, if you've, if you've ever signed up before, you're just going to click in the login button here on the upper right-hand side. If you never have signed in, uh, you need to sign up first. You simply click on that. It's going to ask you to enter your date of birth and choose an identification method. Uh, which basically a lot of people use social security numbers. You can use any of these other ones uh, if you wish to. And if you are in the system, uh, even if you had bought a fishing license in the past, it's going to find you in this system. If not, it's going to tell you no records found and you need to create a new client ID. So in this case, uh, I have already done that. And so when you click on log in, you're going to simply enter your email, which this is my email, and then your password. And then when we get logged into this, uh, our client ID is gonna come up uh, with all of our information here. And the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna start on the left-hand side where it says my account and look at profile. So I wanna make sure everything is correct here. Uh, I can edit some of this stuff, but not the personal info up top because this is what I created my client with right here. What I can edit on here is my email by clicking the edit profile button right here, uh, phone number, my height, weight, address, any of this stuff I can edit by simply clicking on the little pencil right there. So if all this stuff is correct, I also wanna go down 
uh, to payment methods. Uh, now you can do this at the end of the application, uh, but I like to just do it right now. So payment methods right here. And uh, you can see I have two visas in here. One expires on the 25th, one on the 22nd. If any of these are expired or you're not planning on using them, it's best to go ahead and click on this arrow down button on the side and you'll see here, 100 buck, uh, add new card. I can delete this card and pull it right out of the system. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. And when I click on that, it says, are you sure you want to remove this payment? Uh, yes, I am. And it takes just a second and you can see that one goes away. Now I've got my current updated information in there. Uh, if I want to add a new card, I simply click on this add new card and loading payment options. And then you basically fill this out with all your information. Uh, I'm gonna also move down to return cards and surveys right now, because if you draw a big game tag, uh, this is where you're gonna come to this website to do your return card. If you fail to do this by the end of January, uh, you will not be eligible to apply next year until you pay a $50 fee to get that reinstated and you still got to fill out the survey. So don't forget to do that when you come back. So when I click on this, uh, you can see a Hunter Buck currently has a HIP survey, which is a harvest information program for migratory birds. Uh, and that's solely because I've already purchased myself a hunting license. Uh, so when I click on the arrow down button, it says take survey uh, because this is still pending. Uh, I won't do it right now because, of course, the migratory bird season hasn't even opened for this year. And uh, I want to do this at the end of the year for the upload. Now, if I had a big game survey in here, it would give me that choice too, uh, right underneath here that would say big game survey. And you can take that as soon as you come back from the field. Uh, let's talk a minute about linking customers accounts, which is our next one right down here. Uh, this is a favorite for a lot of youth hunters who, number one, who do not have an email or a credit card. Uh, you can link them. And what I've done here is I've linked um, Phil's buck, uh, which uh, is his information when I click on the arrow down button is, uh, or I'm sorry, her information. And uh, here's her client ID and date of birth. I can always unlink her right here too. If uh, for some unknown reason, she comes up with her own email uh, and own credit card and stuff, uh, then I can unlink her and she can have access. Phil's will not be able to access this account unless I give her my email and password, which I would say don't do to, to anyone. Uh, this really works great for minors. Uh, so that way an adult can monitor that. It, you can also do it if you, know, you don't have an email and you want to do it for a friend of yours. Just remember, if you give them the, the access to this, uh, they can come in and update any of this information as well. Uh, so with that, uh, if I want to link someone new to the account, uh, I've got a friend coming in from out of town. He says, go ahead and take care of it for me. Uh, I can click on this, and I'm going to do the same system that I did from the beginning, enter the birth date, and then choose a, one of my uh, sources right here. So uh, on the linking accounts, uh, you can link as many people to this uh, as you wish. Uh, another thing you can look for if you're, if you're new this year to this uh, uh, application period, uh, or you wanna see how many applications and points you got, you can go to the next column here, application and points. And you're gonna see uh, that I've got quite a few in here uh, and some I've withdrawn from. Uh, if you withdraw from any of these applications, you've, you've already paid the application fee and that is non-refundable. So make sure you get everything together before you put all this stuff in so that you don't uh, have to withdraw. You can see down here, I still have an application that I've entered as a party leader, and this is for resident antelope horns shorter than ears. So if I get a, a friend uh, that calls me up and says, hey, I, would, I wish I could go with you on that hunt, uh, I can say, hey, uh, you can. Uh, you can put in right here, if I click on this arrow down button, 
it's going to bring up what's called a group code right here. And all I have to do is give my friend that code and I'll show you how to enter that when he goes in uh, and puts it in. Now, if he enters my group, I've already selected my units here. He will not be able to adjust these. Uh, all he can do is join my group. That way we'll be in as a group together and uh, we will be able to um, uh, hunt the same time. Uh, me as the group leader, I can go in here down at the bottom and I can edit these choices by clicking on that. And if I click on that right here, it's gonna take me to the choices that I did. And once again, sometimes it, it takes a second or two to bring all that information up. And you can see on the right-hand side how I have first choice is 065142, and my second choice is 031. And he says, uh, hey, uh, uh, Hunter, I really wish you would have put 031 first. That's a unit I'm very familiar with. So all I have to do is these two little bars right here is click on them and just drag that up to there. And you can see that swapped it around. And then down at the bottom, I save these changes and it automatically goes back and does that. Uh, now he would not be able to do that because I'm the group leader on that one. But if this was an individual account, you could go in and do it individually. So uh, that's a, a little bit about uh, uh, the party leader and we're gonna have a, a little bit more of that coming up in uh, when we start the application. Uh, also, what's uh, really great this year is the safety certifications. Uh, obviously, with this last year uh, and Hunter Education, uh, we haven't had any in-person classes. Anyone who is 11 years of age or older, though, can take the Hunter Education course online, and you're going to get the Nevada Hunter Education Certificate printed right at the end when you complete that course. And uh, you can go in here and add a new certificate to this. And this certificate ty type is only good for Nevada. So if you have a friend from out of state that's coming hunting with you uh, and they're born after 1960, they're gonna have to have proof of hunter education. So if they did not take the Nevada hunter education course, they took it from somewhere else. Uh, this certificate here, you only have one choice for the Nevada Hunter Education, and then you just enter your certificate number here, and then you submit. But if you are from California, and you've got a California Hunter Education card, you're going to need to go down to this lower right-hand corner where it says support. It's that orange button there. You click on that. You're going to enter your name, your email address, last name, reason, which I'm going to click on this one and say Hunter Safety Education Certificate. I'll click right on that. And then you see I scroll down here and it says add up to five files. I'm going to click on this and I'm gonna upload that file of my Hunter Education Certificate and then send it away uh, to Calcomy. Now, if you're local and you have an out of state, uh, you can also always bring that into one of our offices, your certificate, uh, and we can put you right in that system. And remember, that's only if it's an out-of-state certificate because we don't have access to the other states' uh, records. Uh, lastly here is our auto renewals. And uh, this is a fabulous feature that uh, came up a few years back. And uh, when I click on auto renew, you see here resident annual hunt fish combo, yes. And this is good till uh, next uh, March 1st, uh, 2022. And then it's gonna automatically renew with my credit card information already in here. So I don't have to worry about, is my license still available? Uh, uh, do I have to go down and buy one or do I have to come back in here? It's gonna auto renew. It's a fabulous feature. I highly recommend everyone get on the auto renew. Now, just because we have an auto renew hunting license, uh, you still have to carry your license on your persons with you. So. Once you have this uh, auto renew set up, uh, you can go up here to license and permits. You can click on this and you can see here that uh, I currently have a mountain lion tag and I have a resident annual hunt fish combo. If I go up to the upper right hand corner where it says print active license, I can click on that. I have a choice of print or email. I can choose one of these to send it to me. 
It's great to email it to yourself. You can take a snapshot on it and save it uh, in your phone as a photo. Uh, if you're out hunting, uh, more than likely, you probably got a phone for taking pictures or keeping in touch with other people. Uh, so you can bring that screenshot of your license up if you don't even have any cell service. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can click on print it as well. And uh, when you click the print, it takes a couple seconds to bring up that PDF. And uh, as soon as that license comes up, uh, we'll be able to print that one. And then you can carry that on your person uh, and you can print as many of these uh, as you like. So uh, this is my license right here. So uh, with that one, uh, that's how to keep uh, your license, keep your auto renewals going, your safety, safety certificates. Um, when uh, I'm gonna go back to applications and points real quick, cause I forgot to point something out to you. Uh, on these applications here, uh, it, it's a little confusing up at the top. It says application and points. Uh, so right now we're in the application period here. And if we click on points, it's gonna say, I'm new to the system, uh, I haven't applied last year. And so here I have no points. Uh, so there's how you check for your points and you check your application as well. Uh, with that being done, uh, we know how to link customer accounts, return cards, vessels, license, uh, payment methods, uh, our order history uh, and our profile. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and apply for some tags. Uh, click on apply for tags. It's going to ask me if I'm a resident, which I am right now. And uh, 1 2000 is my birthday, or when I became a resident, I'm sorry. I'm a little older than, uh, than that, I guess. And we're going to go ahead and do the antlered mule deer. So when I click on antlered mule deer, it's going to give me available draws. Now, here's what I talked about a little bit early. This I can apply for the Silver State Mule Deer tag. You just simply click on that box. That's one opportunity. And then Resident Mule Deer Antlert, apply for this draw. And then a request to be an alternate. This is what's uh, very important. And I think everyone should uh, request to be an alternate. It's only for the first choice uh, that you pick. And as an alternate, the applicant has the potential to be selected to receive his tag in the event that the primary recipient returns to the department uh, his tag or there's leftover tags. An applicant uh, will only be considered for the alternate tag if it is requested to be an alternate in the first unit choice of the application. So if you don't choose this, and there are leftover tags, uh, these tags are gonna go into that first come first serve. So by choosing the alternate, uh, I'm giving myself another opportunity. Uh, if something gets returned, uh, I'm going to be able to be chosen uh, as, and I'm next in line. It doesn't mean that you're, you're going to get it because there might be a bunch of other people in front of you that have also chosen the alternate. But this is a way that uh, you can receive another tag uh, if you were unsuccessful in, in this draw. And then we have the uh, Mule Deer PIW, which is a whole nother chance. So right here, I'm giving myself really four chances for deer, and I haven't even made any selections yet. Now, because I've chosen these, you'll notice that the uh, Antler Mule Deer bonus point is in a light gray, so it doesn't give me that option to choose that. I can't choose this, because if I'm unsuccessful in these up here, I'm going to get a bonus point. Uh, if for some reason uh, I've got a lot of bonus points on bighorn and elk, and uh, I think I really want to uh, not put in for all three because I don't have the time to do that, uh, then I would want to just go down and choose a bonus point only. Because once again, I wanna keep those bonus points because every year makes a difference on your bonus points because those numbers are squared. So once I choose uh, all my selections here, I'm gonna continue. And uh, how do I want to apply? Uh, I want to apply as an ind individual hunt, create a new party or join an existing party. So earlier where I showed you where that group number was, this is where your friend would click to join 
the group. And they would click here for hunt party number. You would enter that number in here and then continue. But for, uh, and that remember that was on antelope. So this is our deer hunt. So we're gonna create a new party hunt here because I've got a couple friends that wanna go and I'm gonna be the party leader. So by creating a new party hunt, uh, the difference in this is I'm the only one that can alter my choices and uh, uh, other individuals are going to get the code that I give them. So they're going to make their own payment. They're going to have their own account. Don't confuse with creating a party hunt with linking an account uh, because it, they're totally separate. The linking account is just for someone who uh, is a minor who doesn't have a credit card or a driver's license uh, or email. And um, the party hunt, uh, an individual, you're just going to give them that code. They're going to have to sign on like this and take care of their own file and then uh, put that code in. So continuing on with that, uh, it says uh, I needed a valid license. I already purchased my license, uh, but I'm going to show you when we get uh, fills uh, how, how you purchase that license. Okay, so uh, for here, uh, you can zoom in and out of these. You can also hover on each unit if you're not sure what the unit number is. Uh, for the purpose of this class, I'm just gonna go right to here and I'm gonna add this one. Uh, every hunt on uh, uh, weapon choice, uh, the first thing's gonna come up is any legal weapon. So that's gonna come up first. And that's what I wanna start with. So I'm gonna check on that box and then I'm gonna submit. Uh, uh, I also wanna do an archery. So I can mix and match these, but if I want archery or I want muzzleloader, I have to click on that bow up there and you see the date has changed and I can mix that one. And then uh, I think I'm gonna try the muzzleloader as well and I can try that one. Now you see, I've got three choices over here. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna choose five choices. Uh, once again, what are my best chances of getting the tag? You have to choose as many choices as you can, as many categories and as many opportunities. Uh, so I've chosen all three of them in this unit. Uh, I'm going to go to the next unit. And uh, here is a 014. Uh, I'm going to do it reverse this time. I'm going to do muzzleloader first. And then I'm going to do archery second. And you'll see it says I've reached the maximum number of choices. So that's all I can choose. Now I'm gonna submit my choices. And we're familiar with this. If I do make a mistake here or someone says, oh, Martin, let's change those around. I can take my third choice and I can move up here to my second choice and they swap around. So now that I've got all five choices, I wanna submit those choices. And it's going to take a second there to bring everything up. It's gonna tell me what I have submitted. One is the Silver State Mule Deer, Resident Mule Deer Antler, Resident Mule Deer PIW. Uh, and then this is what's due right now. These are the application fees. If I'm successful in these, then I will owe these tag fees over here on this side. So for right now, what's due is the $49. It allows me to look here and uh, the Silver State tag is any open unit, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning. Resident Mule Deer, here's the five choices that I chose. And PIW is also any open unit. So I can either continue shopping or I can check out. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out with this. And the first thing that's gonna come up here, uh, would I like to donate and support resource fund donation? What is the resource fund donation? It goes into the Heritage Trust account. Uh, just like money from the PIW, uh, and it allows the Department of Wildlife to manage, uh, preserve, and protect uh, wildlife. So uh, this is a donation uh, between one and a thousand, and I'm going to put uh, ten dollars in there and donate that one. And it's going to add that to uh, my account. Thank you for my contributions to the resource fund donation. Uh, here's my Silver State. Uh, my resident mule deer, uh, and my resident PIW. Uh, keep in mind that on, on every application, uh, there's a $3 predator management fee and a dollar processing fee. Uh, elk is always $5 more, 
uh, because that goes to the landowner compensation. Uh, here's my re, uh, resource fund donation that I put down here. I want to continue on with that. Uh, uh, I want to select which items I want to send to the following address. So here is my address uh, that I'm using, 3373 Pepper Lane. Uh, that's the one I have to click on, uh, or I can add a new shipping address. Remember, this is where your tag is going to come to. Uh, I'm going to continue on with that. And when uh, the next thing comes up, everything is shipped UPS ground. So I'm basically going to click on continue here. And then it's going to my payment method, which remember at the beginning, I've already updated. Uh, I can add a new card if I want to at this point in the game, but I've already selected this one. So, and I updated that at the beginning. And so I don't have to do any of that right now. And then I can place my order. And then uh, when it places your order, it's going to print you a receipt uh, that you can either keep in the computer or you can print the hard copy out if you have a printer at home. So here it tells me my order has been placed. Here's my order number. Here it tells me everything. Uh, a note, I've also opt to be an alternate uh, in any open unit for my Silver State tag and my PIW tag, any open unit. And here's my total. So I can print this receipt uh, right here by clicking this, or I can go back to my account. So when I go back to my account, uh, one thing I want to go to is uh, my uh, order history. And you can see uh, here's the one that I, I just placed for a total of $49. If I click on this, it's going to uh, tell me what I applied for. And then I also can click back on this receipt and print that one as well. It's the same one that I just, uh, just closed and went back to it. To my profile. So here it is here. Now, if I make a mistake and say, uh, oh, yeah, I want it to be an alternate, uh, it's, uh, it's very easy to fix. Uh, we're going to go right back to application and points. And then here is my uh, resident mule deer party leader. I'm going to click on that. Uh, you see here's the alternate yes. So if I had clicked no on this, I can click on this pencil. Are you sure you want to change the application alternate status? Okay. So now I'm no longer an alternate. So if you clicked no on that, uh, I would suggest to go back to that one and uh, change it to yes. Now I also, as I showed you earlier, can go back in here and edit my choices. Uh, if for some reason uh, I cannot go and I, I just need to convert this to a bonus point because something came up uh, that I wasn't aware of, uh, I can convert this to bonus points. Uh, uh, this is a group code. So if there's other members on this party, uh, they will not be removed, only me will be removed from that and they will still be the group. Hey, Marty, can, can I pop in and ask a question real quick? Because we're getting a lot of the same questions. Okay. Um, so I figured it probably needs to be answered all the way around. Um, people are asking if you have to purchase a hunting license for bonus points, and also if you can change from bonus points back to applying for a tag to a hunt, can you go back and forth? Uh, so when you convert this to a bonus point, uh, you can while the system is still open, uh, but you can't go from bonus point to application because it's a different fee. And uh, just a, a minute ago, how I showed you, there's a predator fee for $3 and then a processing fee uh, and then the $10. So to just to apply like for deer is $14. If I select bonus point only, it's only a $10 fee and a dollar processing. So you don't pay that uh, uh, one, or you don't pay that $3 predator fee. So you would have to withdraw that application 
and then reapply. So uh, you're better off to apply and then convert back to bonus points uh, if you wanted to do that. Okay, and then the other question was, um, do you have to purchase a hunting license to only acquire bonus points? Yep, and we're coming right up on that one. Uh, it's right around the corner here. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So on this one uh, here, uh, that's, that is my application. And so I want to go back to my profile. And remember at the beginning of the uh, 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 application period here, uh, I linked an account, uh, fills. So if I go over and hover over account and details, uh, you can see it says, hi, Hunter Buck. If I just come straight down here, here's uh, something that is linked to my account. Here's Phil's Buck. So switch selected customer. So I am gonna switch to, Mr. Phil, yep, and I can't remember if that was a deer deer hunt or if that was a, uh, I think it was an antelope hunt. We'll try this one. Um, so on this one here, uh, I have to do the same thing because even though this person's linked to my account, uh, I did my application already. Now I have to go back and do uh, fills. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply for tags. And yes, I'm a resident. Same thing, we're gonna go through this. And let me try, I can't remember if I did the antelope, uh, uh, horn shorter than ears, or if it was deer. Let's try this one. So I'm gonna apply for this draw. And you'll notice I don't have any choices here of the Silver State or the PIW because there is none for horns shorter than the ears. So it only gives me my availability to what, uh, what is available to apply for. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the uh, request to be an alternate because that's an excellent opportunity. Uh, I'm going to join this hunt party right here. And let me just make sure that I'm in the right one because I have done several of these. And when you're entering this code, it is case sensitive. So make sure that you put the right code in. And now it's gonna tell me that you need a valid hunting license. So here's where I purchase a hunting license now with the application, or I can purchase a hunting license only if, if successful in the draw. But I want to keep my bonus points going. And in order to keep a bonus point, you have to have an active license. So in this case, I'm going to purchase a license now with the application. And here I get to choose either a res resident annual hunt for $38 or a resident annual hunt and fish combo. I'm going to choose the combo because if I'm going up in antelope country and I'm up there for five or six days, uh, I might get a chance to do some fishing. So I'm gonna get the combination license. Now you notice that it didn't give me any option to choose any units because I joined a group. So by joining that group, here's the choices already picked for me. I don't get to do that because I'm joining my group. So here it tells me again, shorter than ears, hunt fish combo, uh, and then my uh, uh, horn shorter than ear tag. And now I'm gonna go ahead and check out the department publicly posts results of each big game draw on the Endow license every year. Would you like the department to manage all of your draw results this year? This is a little different. Uh, this is how you want your information. If you wanna see if you drew on the internet, then you need to click the please include my draw results on the list. Uh, if you choose, please keep my draw results private you are not going to show up on the list. Uh, a little bit new this year on this one. So I'm going to submit that. And it's taking me right back to the checkout. Uh, I'm going to donate the
thank you for my uh, uh, donation. And then uh, how would you like to receive your license shipped to me? There's an additional fee for this. I'm gonna go ahead and print uh, my own license. Uh, there is a $5 fee to have your license shipped to you. And remember, I already purchased the license before and ran through. So now this person is just purchasing the license on top of joining the group. I'm gonna to ship to this address. UPS ground shipping. Uh, here's the credit card on file. Remember, this account is linked to me. So if you had minor children, you're going to be using the same account. If you had a friend that you linked to your account, you're going to be using this account. If, uh, if you have a person join your group as a party hunt and they have their own account, they're going to be using their own credit card. It's only the linked account. And of course, here's my receipt. And I'm going to go back to my account. Here's Phil's, so now I can go back up here and I can change back to myself, which is Hunter Buck. So uh, with that being said, uh, I can come back into here, my application and points. And now it's gonna show my uh, resident mule deer, my silver state. Uh, and then if I go to, uh, sorry, I meant to stay on fills. Then here we just entered this one, uh, party member, born shorter than ears. I do have the option of changing my alternate. I also can change party. If somebody says, uh, oh, I'd, I'd rather go uh, hunting a different time of year, I can't go during that time. I can change my party. Uh, I can also just leave the party and create my own individual. By leaving the party, you just become an individual uh, with these data. And then you can go back in here, convert to bonus points only, or you can withdraw this application. Remember, once you withdraw this application, I've already paid the fee and that's non-refundable. So uh, it would be better to convert uh, or change party and then go in and edit your party yourself if you want it to, to go on your own. Uh, makes sense? Uh, I hope so. And uh, I guess uh, uh, Dawn and Nicole, uh, if we have some other uh, questions uh, coming in. Okay, so I'm looking at in the big game book and it says that to purchase bonus points, you must purchase a license. Yes, you, you cannot purchase a bonus point uh, unless you have a valid license, okay. but you can purchase a chance in the application and only purchase a license if you're drawn, but then you do not receive a bonus point if you're unsuccessful. And of course you don't get a license either. That's all I'm seeing right now as far as okay. questions go. Um, someone asked if there was going to be coverage of the top units and quality and opportunity for each species like we've done in the past. Um, so. Yeah, we're, well, on the conservation side, we're working on just the application period right now. That might be something coming up through one of the other divisions, the game department or something. Uh, but uh, uh, this one right here is just on the application period. And, you know, in the past, we would do this in person, and it would be a three-hour long uh, presentation. But uh, on the Zoom and the computer, uh, you know, we have split it up and toned it down to where uh, you know an hour is uh, is quite a quite a task in itself to sit uh, in front of the computer. So you may see something on some of those units uh, coming up from game department, uh, 
but uh, the conservation education department right now is just working on uh, how to get uh, uh, help people understand the uh, system on how to apply. Good question, though. Martin, uh, I'm gonna could you touch on um, the process of applying because it could be kind of a long process. Can you log back in, work on other applications? Can you change something you already added? That kind I can. Of thing? I can. So if I go over here and I log out uh, and I'm right back to this page here again, and then I can go right back in and log in tomorrow uh, using my same thing. Um, I simply sign back in and here my profile comes up and then uh, I've already updated all this. So I'm gonna go right to apply for tags and uh, I gotta go right through the same thing. Uh, submit that and this one we will go down and we will just do uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn Ram because I suddenly decided, hey, I wanna do this. Um, uh, bonus points uh, continue. I'm an ineligible for Rocky Mountain bonus points. I've already applied. Sorry, I already did that one. I knew I did quite a few of them. Let me do the black bear. So I'm going to apply for this. Or in Dawn's question, I'm going to do the alternate as well. Um, actually, why don't I just decide I just want a bonus point for this. Um, once I click on the bonus point only, it's going to say, please select a license, uh, which I already have because I purchased that. Uh, it doesn't give me any choices or anything because I'm just buying a bonus point. You can see it's only $11 here, which is why you cannot go back to uh, uh, the application because it's a different uh, dollar amount. And let me think. I think I did Mountain Goat as well. I'm gonna do the spike elk. And I'm going to, I'm just gonna buy a bonus point for that one too. Cause we already seen how to choose the units. I'm gonna check out on this one. It doesn't give me any choices. I'm gonna run right through this. I'm gonna go ahead and give another $10 to the donation. Same credit card, place my order. And then I'm gonna go back to my account. And my applications, which I just did this one. So here's my spike elk. Uh, I can look down here on this one. Uh, uh, I just bought a bonus point, so I have no choices here to go, you know, back to apply. The only thing I can do with the bonus point is withdraw. And if I withdraw that, it's going to say, are you sure you wish to withdraw your application? No bonus points will, will be awarded and no refund will be issued. Yep. Uh, why I would want to do that, I don't know, but I'm going to do it just for uh, your example. But I'm going to say, no, I'm going to go ahead and keep the bonus point. Because with the bonus point, uh, you know, there's absolutely no chance of you getting a tag. You're not applying for one. You're just applying for the bonus point. Does that help? Yes, thank you. And I have another question that I think would be important to answer for everybody. Um, okay. Kind of just about the timeline for the application. So the application deadline is May 10th. And then from that day, um, people are curious, when exactly did the draws occur? And then how long from that draw time is that released to the public? Okay, uh, uh, excellent uh, question. And it was on that first screen uh, or uh, the, the first PowerPoint uh, that I showed up there. And I'll give you the exact dates. May 10th is the deadline. And uh, uh, the application, uh, bonus point applications, you have seven days after the deadline uh, to, uh, uh, you could go in and just uh, add a bonus point if you wish to. And the initial draw results for the first draw, 
uh, is going to be by May 26th. That's an excellent question. But if you, if you, for some unknown reason, miss putting your application in, you still have seven days after the May 10th to just go in and purchase a bonus point because purchasing a bonus point, you're not asking for a tag. You're just asking for a bonus point. Uh, and then the 26th of May is going to be the initial. Then there'll be a second draw. And uh, if uh, there's anything left over after that, uh, probably toward uh, the end of July, August, will be the first come, first serve. And uh, we'll be putting something out uh, when those are coming available. Marty, how old do you have to be to purchase a bonus point? 12. 12 years old for big game. Do you have to have Hunter Ed to acquire a bonus point? Yes, because you have to have a license. In order to get a bonus point, you must have a valid license. And to have a valid license, if you're born after uh, January 1st, 1960, uh, then you uh, need Hunter education. Do you have a better chance for a successful draw as an individual or as a party? I know we kind of got into this, but. Yeah, that's the, that's the question of the decade there. You, you see how many variables there are here. Uh, how many tags are available, uh, which units you are selecting. Uh, remember my uh, uh, example there of the party hunt, uh, how uh, uh, one guy had uh, six bonus points, which equates to 37 numbers. Um, so the chances of him uh, cl collecting a lower number by himself is probably a, a little larger, but it depends on what units they put in for. Uh, some of the units... Uh, may not be in high demand this year. Uh, the question of the, the decade is uh, if everyone did the same thing every year, it would be easy to calculate uh, what would be an easy unit to draw. But the thing is people don't. So that variable is changing every year. Good question though. What else you got? We have a few more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the best strategy if you're new to you take a chance at big game of any type? What's the best strategy? Yeah, applying for everything in all the regions that give the most tags. Like if you just want to tag and you're new, what's, what's the best strategy? <clears throat> well, the best strategy is as I mentioned, like an elk, you've got seven different categories for elk that you could apply for. Uh, so apply for all seven of them. Uh, some of the depredation hunts, you're not gonna get five choices in because that's a very select area. It's very narrowed down. Uh, but choose five choices on every hunt that you can. Uh, some bighorn sheep you can't, mountain goats you can't. There's really only three units to hunt them in. Uh, but if you can choose five choices, choose five choices and choose as many different categories as you can. The Silver State, the PIW, uh, the Antler, the Antler List, the Depredation, the Spike. Uh, choose as many of those as you can. Every category that you choose gives you another opportunity. And then even uh, try your hand at the Dream Tag. You could buy a $10 resource stamp and then one $5 raffle ticket. Every year, I see this at the office. I'll see uh, someone who comes in and I'll say, how many times did you put in for bighorn sheep? Because you have to bring your bighorn sheep in to get it sealed. And they'll be like, this is the first year I ever apply. And the, the difference between our system being a bonus point system and a preference point system is even though you might get 37 numbers selected by the computer and you have the low number, a person can come right in behind you and draw and only get one number and draw a lower number than you. And that's the difference between a bonus point system and a preference point. Uh, just because you have more bonus points, you know, there's no guarantee that you're going to draw. If you are unsuccessful and you go to first come first serve, do you lose your bonus points on the first come first serve tag? 
Yes, any any time, uh, the only time you don't lose any bonus points uh, is when uh, you're in the uh, silver state tag. Uh, anytime you draw a tag after that, uh, you'll revert to zero. And the exception of the uh, depredation tags as well. Those don't, don't count. Can you- and, land, and landowner, you know, that, that small section that I mentioned there. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Are depredation hunts on private land and should I have permission prior to application? Well, I mean, they can be on private land for sure. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, the landowner tag uh, typically has some kind of access. He's got, uh, uh, you know, elk coming down into his fields or whatever. Uh, and, and he's got need to provide access to you. You might not be hunting directly on his private land, but uh, he will grant you access to get to public land. Uh, you know, he might not want you hunting in the middle of his field or something, but on the outskirts of it where these elk are coming through. Uh, 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 so you could be on private land and you could get access through private land uh, for any of those tags. Okay, and then I know we touched on this one a couple times. Um, yes, you can do an application and not check out so you can save it and then come back later and complete more applications than check out, right? Well, you, you would want to, you would want to go ahead and check out uh, and then come back and do more applications. You don't have to sit down and do, you know, all 14 of them uh, in one, in one sitting, you can come in and do deer and tomorrow do elk and then Keep doing that, but you should run all the way through and check out because you're going to have your credit card on file. It's just a matter of clicking the button uh, and then go in tomorrow and choose Mountain Goat. Uh, you know, maybe you'll run into some friends a couple of days from now and they say, "Hey, why don't we why don't we put together for uh, antelope horn shorter than ear hunt as a group?" You know, uh, so uh, then you can go back in and 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 keep adding to it. That is all the questions we have right now. Wow. No questions from you, Nicole. No, we're all caught up. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, Nicole is going, I'm going to pass it over to Nicole. All right, so you guys should be seeing our final slide. This is um, on the left hand side, you'll see a picture of our big game seasons and applications book. I did share that link in the chat. That's um, our digital copy, but you can come into your regional endow office, which are listed right here on the right um, to pick up a physical copy if you'd like. I think it is very helpful to have that physical copy. There is a map inside that you can fold out um, and it's very large, so that can help you plan your hunts. And then you'll also see on the screen, we have um, the NDAL licensing website. If you lost your hunter education card, you will want to check out ilostmycard.com. And that's to get that verification that you do have hunter education when you are applying on our, on our application. And then you have both Martin and Dawn's information. Martin is out of the Las Vegas office and Dawn is out of the Reno office, um, but we can help you no matter where you are. And maybe most importantly is that number right under the map. It's that 855 number. And you can call that number with any questions you have regarding your application. Great. Other than well that, I don't see any other questions in the Q&A box. Um, so I'm good unless Dawn, you have anything else? Nope, that was it. I just wanted to make sure that um, that that 855 number was super, super present. That's gonna be the go-to number for any of your questions. We have staff that up until you know the night that tags close, we have staff on hand to answer any questions that you guys may need answered. Otherwise, that's all I have. <laughs> Great, and thanks for joining us tonight, you guys.